Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video this morning. I hope that you're doing really great and so we will be taking a look at what is currently going on across the North Atlantic Basin. We'll be looking at that strong tropical wave which is continuing westward and is likely to bring impacts to the Caribbean later this week. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important video. Alright, so as we return to this satellite imagery, there we can see lots of showers and thunderstorms off the east coast of the U.S. Uh, nothing much happening across the Caribbean right now. And as there in the main development region, there are a couple of tropical waves. And as we look at this surface chart, uh, here we can see them being marked. So one is making its way across the central Caribbean right now. Another has entered the region. So uh, that will kind of increase the rainfall chance for some spots. Nothing too crazy. Another one is out there where uh, most of the activity so that was in association with it has dissipated thanks to the dry air and then that other one to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. So that is the one uh, that we're seeing with all of this activity. So all this shower and thunderstorm activities ahead of that uh, wave axis. And so let us zoom into the Caribbean. And here we can see that the main spot is this blob, which is between Jamaica, Haiti, and Cuba. So uh, there we can see it. It is uh, producing quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity, most of which is offshore. Uh, some of that was making its way into parts of eastern Jamaica. You can let me know in the comments if you guys had any rainfall activity as it has been very dry, especially across some parts of eastern parishes. But aside from that blob, there isn't much looking across the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, some isolated activity, and uh, going to Central America, not much either. We really see that activity down in parts of Panama, going into Colombia, and across some spots in Venezuela. But uh, other surrounding areas, the ABC Islands, going to Trinidad to bagel there isn't much happening right now it should be a very sunny morning and so let us go ahead and return to this and so uh some models are expecting that this could try to develop especially the gfs model so we'll be looking at what that is showing uh later down in this video but as for the dry air map here we have it and uh this could explain where things being pretty much quiet right now across the caribbean because there is some dry air within the region also extended into the Turks and caicos Island in parts of the Bahamas and across most of the main development regions. So we can see that the blob lies to the south of all this massive dry air. So there isn't much infiltration happening and that is why it is looking so robust right now. And there's another one off the coast of Africa. So uh, once it isn't in that area where there is majority of that dry air, then uh, that is what we're going to be seeing. All that activity just thriving. But as of now, it is not marked for potential development. Let's see what happens over the next couple of days but it is certainly looking and so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the rainfall expected throughout today for the Caribbean and surrounding areas so as we take a look at the GFS map first here we can see that much rainfall is not expected most likely just some isolated activity across some parts uh, across most islands so some areas still could be a lot drier than others such as Trinidad Tobago uh, and we're seeing here that the GFS is actually expecting some substantial rainfall across some spots in Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, even for the Dominican Republic and parts of the Lesser Antilles, such as Guadalupe, Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and Barbados as well. So uh, maybe an occasional heavy downpour or so to result in some of that uh, substantial rainfall activity. But as of right now, there isn't anything major in the region. So pretty interesting here. Uh, also some substantial rainfall across some spots in Central America, such as Panama and parts of Colombia and sections in Venezuela. And going on to the Euro model, Euro is not expecting as much rainfall across the Eastern Caribbean and for most other islands might just be some isolated activity, especially as we head into this afternoon but we also see that substantial rainfall expected for parts of central and northern south america not much expected for the guyanas today and so guys let's look at what the gfs model has to show so there we have the time up there and we we'll see more of these shades of uh greens going to those uh yellows and reds that is indicating the precipitation rate so as we're going to be heading into the latter part of this week thursday the 10th of august there we can see all that activity in association with the current tropical wave that i showed you guys uh just in the vicinity 
Royalty of the Lesser Antilles. As we head into the end of this week, going to Saturday, there we can see all of that activity continuing westward. Notice all that moisture across the Caribbean. So uh, GFS has it that this will be trying to develop. Going to roughly around a week from now. Still a lot of activity seen across parts of the Caribbean and then eventually GFS has something trying to get itself together before making its way into the vicinity of Belize. And note that this does not have to be the outcome guys. This is just a prediction. The next model run could show something very much different and other models are not really expecting that this is going to be developing into something in the Caribbean but pretty interesting here and as I always say it doesn't take a tropical cycle to result in some dangerous impacts. Sometimes these strong tropical waves are enough to cause some flooding, strong gale force winds as well. So it takes less than a tropical cyclone. And so the ideal scenario would be uh, the system remaining as a tropical wave with substantial activity to result in rainfall for many spots because most of the Caribbean is longing for some uh, well-needed rainfall relief. And so this tropical wave could provide just that but as I said we have to also be mindful of the fact that sometimes these tropical waves are enough to result in damages and uh, even here in Jamaica I have been seeing the comments from you guys uh, about just how dry it has been for your area of course some spots have been receiving some rainfall others haven't but if this comes true what the GFS is expecting where we have a lot of activity across the Caribbean that could offset the heat and even the drought that some areas have been experiencing and so that would be the ideal scenario here and to not actually a tropical cyclone developing and doing more harm than good. And so guys, development will all be dependent on how conducive conditions are. So those upper level winds have to be conducive, not too strong up there. And uh, the sea surface temperatures are well on their way. It is very warm across most of the main development region. And the main inhibiting factor is that dry air, which has been dominant for some time now. So let's see if it is going to be managing to reach the Caribbean with all this activity. But once uh, conditions are more conducive across the Western Atlantic, then we could very well see this try to develop into something and there are more tropical waves to come behind it and uh, let's see what's going to be happening but GFS is also forecasting that ahead into the end of this month will be very active showing multiple cyclones at that which uh, I don't see as completely impossible but I doubt that at this point in time so let's wait and see what's going to be happening because only time can tell and then finally we're hopping over into the eastern pacific to look at two active tropical cyclones hurricane dora and tropical storm Eugene. So there we have Dora, tiny but mighty, still a cat for hurricane out there, not a threat to land, fortunately. And there is Eugene off the coast of Mexico. And so Eugene wasn't initially expected to become a hurricane, but it seems as though it wants to grab the opportunity to do so. And if it does, it will be the fifth hurricane and named storm of the eastern pacific season for this year which means every tropical storm that has developed has made it to hurricane intensity so far two have become major hurricanes and so uh, let's go on to the cone forecast for eugene there we have it maximum sustained when 65 miles per hour it could briefly become a hurricane but uh sea surface temperatures will decrease as it continues to the northwest and uh, eventually it will become post-tropical and the remnants might make their way into the northern part of the baja California Peninsula or maybe even into California. As for Dora, there isn't much change with the track. It is just about the intensity at this point in time. So it is continuing westward at 21 miles per hour, moving uh, with maximum sustained winds of 145 miles per hour. So it's maintaining CAC4 status for now and it should slowly weaken very slowly as we head throughout this week but throughout this time frame heading to thursday it is expected to remain hurricane unfortunately not a threat to the hawaiian islands not going to be bringing any direct impacts and so guys that is what i wanted to share with you in this update and i hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments i will respond once i get the chance and as always remember to be with wise